Greetings everyone, my name is Napoleon Complex, I go by Ludendorff and the Solar and Forms. Welcome back to Pike and Shot Campaigns, and welcome back to learning the game. Now this at least is an army I know something about. This is the Scottish 1494 to 1557 versus the English 1494 to 1542 list. Now I have, I mean I've played this list quite a bit in single player so I basically know what it's about. We have these formidable unarmored pike blocks which are vulnerable to missile fire but once they clash can push just about any of the English units out of the way. So they're very powerful units, but they're very exposed to the English longbows. Uh, we have units of skirmishing up Ruziers, which are going to be useful for dealing with situations like this. Pockets of rough ground. And we have units of Scottish Highlanders, which are Im impact foot with some bow capability. Now I've always been rather skeptical of the value of these units. I've always preferred to bring more pike or more cavalry. But... They are quite good against um, units on rough ground because of their uh, status as warriors. Basically undisciplined medium foot. And so I think I may bring some of them today just to deal with this little mountain here. So we'll mainly be taking pikemen, I know that much. I'm a big fan of the Scottish pike. Uh, if there's any unit that I'd swear by, it would be these guys. And we'll take some Scottish Light Horse, but I do want one unit of Scottish Highlanders, and it's aimed squarely at this square here. Do I want some Skirmishing Up Buziers? Because they could be quite useful, but if I want to bring the Up Buziers, I need to leave a Pike Block at home. And that's an entire Pike Block that I need to send home if I want to bring them. Now the English army will be much larger because their units are much more cost effective. So it is a rather simplistic strategy I think I'm going for here. And to not take any artillery whatsoever, well then again we don't have any shooting units to back it up. So I'm not convinced of the value of artillery in this case, it's just one more thing I need to guard. I suppose it would be useful against the English cavalry, seeing as my cavalry isn't up, really up to much. We do not have much in the way of cavalry, do we? That's the other thing, I do not have much in the way of cavalry of my own. Which means they could... Right, I need to think of this less like a single player player would and more like a multiplayer player would. The English have cavalry of their own, they are going to try and get those around my flanks. If I don't protect my flanks, I'm going to be in trouble. I think based on that alone, I have to bring more cavalry. So okay, let's not go quite so overboard on the pike front. Let's bring what horse I can. And I'll bring some arc viziers. Honestly, at that point, I may as well bring two units of arc viziers because they can support one another. I can maybe aim at this patch of ground here. Got some highlanders for a specific job. I suppose 10 blocks of pikes will hopefully do the job, and, well, I've got a single unit of cannons. It's going to be a rapid advance to contact, that's going to be the doctrine here, that I want the English on the defensive, and I want to try and break through them before their cavalry can cause us any damage. Next turn. My opponent today is Awesome 4, and uh, you've seen him a few times on Snuggle Bunny's channel. Uh, if you watch that, which you certainly should, go and check it out. Uh, he is quite an experienced opponent. So I suspect I'm in for a rough time today. Now the English do quite well on rough ground and they've got lots of longbows and lots of firepower. So what I think I want to do today is a rapid advance to contact. And I probably want to weight my advance towards that one, well, actually possibly both of these hills. <coughs> I think what I want to do is actually split my army down the middle and have a right flank force and a left flank force with my lighter units in the middle. And the reason I want to take that approach is because uh, what I think I'll do is I will leave the guns on the extreme flank on the hill here so that they can fire 
down onto the valley. Uh, but the reason I want to do it this way is because I want to control the hills. Uh, if I try and focus on one flank, then the English can run up onto this flank. And if I try to control this flank, the English can run up onto this flank. If I make sure I control the advance towards both flanks, then the English have nowhere to hide. They'll have to fight out in the open, and that's where I can beat them. So my centre by necessity is going to be quite weak. And so to make do to make up for that, uh, okay, maybe I can actually afford to set up an assault line because this is of course why I brought the Scottish Highlanders. They are aimed at that area of rough ground there. Um, okay, and let's see what's the best way to use my light troops to support this advance. Well, fire is going to be worst coming from units overlapping my line on the flanks, so I probably want my arquebusiers to be on either side, shielding us from fire. And I know I've got the gap in the centre, so I've got Scott's horse guarding against that. So if anything tries to push through the centre, they have our small body of cavalry to deal with. While my own cavalry are shielded behind. So pike blocks out in front, cavalry in reserve to the rear. And I'll also keep some cavalry out towards the flanks for that purpose also. Okay, next turn. So that's the English side setting up. Shifting towards the right, but because of my deployment, I should be able to react well to that. Let's take a look at the army. Three units of billmen and longbowmen. One unit of militia billmen and longbowmen. A unit of men at arms. This looks eminently breakable. Okay. Uh, my Highlanders might end up being a bit wasted. I think I'll fire at the, uh, oh, the Lanschnecht Kyles, though, will be difficult opponents. Uh, but that's fine. Two of my pike blocks can have a, diff can have a difficult day of things. Um, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I think I'll target the Lanschnecht Kyles a little bit. But uh, I think I'll also turn my guns to face this way to start targeting the more vulnerable uh, Bellmen and Longbowmen. Who I think are shakier targets. We will have to attack the hell. Actually, hmm. I wonder if I can't use my cavalry to block the Lanschnecht Kyles in places. So we'll start to shadow the English force. Okay, the rough ground is going to slow us down, which is annoying, but not the end of the world. Hmm. Well, the, Scot the Scots do have a the English, sorry, do have a strong force of longbowmen on this flank, uh, and I don't have a whole lot of cavalry. Now, my cavalry would be good against longbows if they can charge into them. Uh, okay, rather than go with this plan to try and block the Lanschnecht Kyle, I think my, the plan has to be to try to get my horse into the longbows. You know what? The Scottish Highlanders wouldn't be a bad choice for that either. So we're going to try and get our Scots horse into the l longbowmen. And they might have some application against the men-at-arms as well to block them and prevent them from turning to protect this area. Uh, and I'll try to use my Scottish horse over here to deal with the English longbows. Because that's probably something that these light lancers are actually good at. Next turn. Okay. 
no problem. Even with the highest advantage, there's no way those uh, bellmen are going to be able to resist us. Right, well the one advantage the English have is of course they have all the missile units. So I will have to be quick. Can't quite move in to attack those longbowmen from long range, but I can start to threaten the line of advance. Yes, yes. There, now they try to advance they'll get hit. And uh also, of course, have my Highlanders waiting in the wings. His line is longer than mine, which is uh, a slight concern. Hmm. Well, considering interesting that they are such a good target, it must be enfilade fire. Either that or. Uh, Oh, I see enfilade doesn't make a difference to already large targets. Right, well, I see very little point in trying to hit these steady lanch neck Kyle, so I'll go for the wobbliest units in the formation. Right, okay. I guess here all we can do is try and uh, steady our formation. Having a look at this. Obviously, I'm not going to be staying in the rough ground. We're going to be making an advance. But. Ah, no, misclick. Curses. All right, then. Well, that might have actually been a good thing because we could do with advancing. But obviously, these unarmored pikemen are now a space behind. But I think what we'll do is we'll form a solid line here. And I think I'll begin... To, oh right, that's the, that was the idea. I'm trying to bring my horse around to charge the longbowmen. I am worried though about these... Uh... Oh, of course, that's what my men-at-arms are for. That's what my uh, Scots horse are for, to block the men-at-arms. And I've got two units of light lancers to threaten the archers. That's fine. That's a good. That's a good setup. Mm, maybe shouldn't have moved them there though, because now they can get shot at by the uh, enemy. But the main thing is I've got the Scots horse ready to go after the men at arms, and the light lancers threaten the longbow, the longbow's approach. So that's a good setup overall, and I can continue to send my Scottish cavalry around to the flanks to threaten the English longbows if they try to move up and support the pikes. So that will be crucial to us. As I don't necessarily expect the Scots horse to break through, what I do expect them to do is, is uh, tie down the longbowmen long enough for me to win the infantry battle. And then the only real threat to us is the lanch next Kyle, who unfortunately I will have to engage, but what are you going to do? There's, you're going to have one part of the battlefield where you're not as strong as elsewhere. Next turn. Hmm. The town could actually help us against the lunch next Kyle. That little mound isn't going to slow down my Scottish pike blocks one bit. Hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. That was a little bit annoying. Ah, uh, priority charge targets are going to start interfering. Well, it should still work out okay. I have. This is just going to be an all out charge, no subtlety here. I'm going straight for the banners. As I say, when I'm going straight for my. Uh, let them come in, I can then sweep the Scots Horts. The Scots Horts? The Scots Horse in to attack or pen the Men at Arms. Maybe get a 2 on 1 advantage against these Lanch Necks. Though I'd really rather go after the Men at Arms with the unarmored pikemen. And then the Scots Horse can swoop in and destroy them and maybe swoop around the back of the entire line. <clears throat> in fact, that's probably a better move. Uh, we'll try and actually sweep, or, sweep around their line. I was hoping to actually charge here, and it works. Move out here, draw a little bit of fire away from my light lancers. Charge! That's right, give it a good screen. Now they have to turn at angles to avoid being engaged by my uh, light lancers. I think the English longbowmen on the hill are in trouble, and the men at arms are too. In fact, I think the entire English line may be shocked into submission. Now, are things going any better on the English? Uh, it'll be the English left against our right. Let's move the Scots horse into position. Because if those longbows come towards us, we can charge out and attack. Keep, I'd say, because I, I'm confident here, we should keep the majority of forces back for the minute and let the let the English do all the advancing, let the English do all the risk taking. Stay at least four tiles away from this area here, and I'm fairly confident that we should be able to win this. Keep the arquebusiers back in support of the Scots light lancers. Because then if the English Lancers want to move up to try and make a difference, then they'll have to deal with gunners as well. And if they try and put, if the light horse try to challenge the medium horse, then the medium horse should win that easily. Next turn. Right, one round of fire from the Billman and Longbowman shouldn't cause us any trouble at all. Focusing on the Arc Viziers. Right, that's my troops into range to charge the longbows. Though we are taking quite a lot of fire. That's fine. Do I really want to waste my attention? Oh! Open flank. Always take the open flank. That's a shame. And uh, of course that allows my horse to move around to finish the next turn. <coughs> Do I really want to go racing after the lanch next Kyle? Should probably focus on the other parts. Oh, I see. Okay, so that... Ah, uh, right, that forces me to charge here, doesn't it? In fact, I can't actually charge this unit with anything. Well, I mean, it still means I get to charge into his longbowmen, so that's still a good situation for me. But it does mean that there's one unit of these juicy billmen and longbowmen who I can't get into yet. Okay, so because of the zone of control rules, um, I can't actually charge this unit either. Or rather, it has to be with this unit. Um, so we've kind of got a two-on-one situation here. I'd rather leave these units in reserve so they can hit the Spillman and Longbowman units. So for the moment, <coughs> because this unit can't fire anything because everything's in melee anyway, we'll just charge in from this side here. Okay. 
And this unit's raw, so it's going to be even more vulnerable. Amazingly, that's of course the unit that doesn't disrupt. Um, hmm. Okay, so if we move like that and like this, then we should be able to slide through this gap here. And uh, of course, that does disjoint the pike line slightly. These unarmored pike then just have to keep the lance neck Kyle under control. Uh, they're going; they're just going to have to bite the bullet and take it. We'll engage a longbow, and again, that's a fragmentation. Okay. And we're charging downhill against these longbows, so that's going to be painful. But we couldn't break them that turn, so we'll move back onto towards the hill. Oh, he's going for this rough ground, doesn't he? That would protect this longbowman, but if that happens, we'll just move on to another piece of part of the battlefield. I'm not particularly bothered. Uh, hit them with the artillery as well. In fact, since there's a gunfight going on here against lighter units, I'll focus the artillery here, because we have very little chance of doing anything significant to these large units. Uh, is there a gap forming in my line? I think there might be a gap forming in my line. That's a bit worrying. Uh, but no problem so far. We need to charge here because I don't want to be taking missile fire all the way through into the enemy line. Uh, probably best to screen my advance with cavalry with our arquebusiers because I can't charge yet. So that at least gives them some problems to worry about. And have the light lancers cover the square here with their zone of control. They will unfortunately have to take the front of the fire. So it's my light horse who will be doing the dying today, I think. Uh, there's just too much here for my horse to stay protected from. But we should be able to get a charge into the Lombardman next turn, unless Austin does something drastic to prevent that. Or manages to get a lucky disrupt against the Scots Force with his Lombardman here. But they will have to advance into fire to do that. Next turn. Austin just expressed his contempt for the English Bill and Bowman. Well, that's why I brought most of the cavalry in the other game. Because I don't trust the English infantry. But it actually makes up a surprisingly small part of the force. You can just bring lots of cavalry if you want. Oh, the uh, English longbowman held far. <clears throat> and they're holding the ground so far. Uh, I think they need a flank attack to actually rescue their position. And the problem with moving up like that is it gives me the uh, Scots horse an easy charge. Of course, the Light Lancers are going to get shelled in Parkatory and back. And the Men-at-Arms don't have the mass to stop those unarmored pikemen. Uh, that might just be the break my units need to break out of this. Wow, <laughs> those... Uh... Those longbowmen are still standing their ground against the units of cavalry and an entire pike block. Right, that's okay. That's a fragmentation. That's a fragmentation. Oh, wow! I would not have seen that coming in a million years. My pike block's losing to those men at arms. Well, we'll take a flank attack and drive the men at arms off the field. Shell them in the back and then charge them off the field. Actually, a lot of the English forces are fighting very bravely. Um, I would have expected to have a breakthrough by now. Yeah, wow, our, uh... Apparently our pikemen aren't very good at this. 
Well, I'll fight here where I can fight them on more even terrain. And uh, we'll get ready for flank attack here. Um, no, that's the whole point. I'm going to wait until we break through and then we can hit the Bellman and Longbowman. Um, and if he backs off, I can always pursue him a little while. Hmm. So they held firm. Cavalry may not be doing quite as good a job as I'd hope they do. Okay. But we're not directly set up for a flank attack here, so try again. That's a disruption, that's something. But we're about to get hit inside with light lancers. Well, it's, it's going my way in the infantry fight. This section's on Sarsen, and we're about to get hit by the Lanch Snake Kyle over here. But we are winning this fight over here, so this is fine. Next turn. just coming rumbling through I think. Ouch. Here we go. And we're gonna slam straight into the unit blazing behind, I think. Nope, not quite. Ooh, right into the longbows. Arc Viziers make it easily. I knew the light cavalry were going to get us. Not quite the units I thought they were going to target, but I knew the light cavalry were going to get us. But we do have the hill advantage, but we took a lot of casualties there, so we'll be weaker. There go the launch next. Kyle, we will lose these melees. You can see already the Scots Pike are getting disrupted. This could be interesting because we could, could go into the flanks of the longbows. And that's exactly what's happened. And that's assuming, of course, that those fragmented lumbos even survive this melee. Which they do. <coughs> Lancers, of course, aren't that effective once they're in melee. Those militia bellmen and longbowmen have uh, held out longer than their quality would suggest they would, they should. They are, of course, getting the stuffing knocked out of us in the Lanch Next Kyle fight. Right. Flank him and destroy him. Okay, couldn't destroy him th this turn. So unfortunately I'll have to wait before getting into the Scots reserves. Because if I move to here I'll be locked in against the Lanchnet Kyle and that's not a situation I want to be in. I just want to avoid this fight for the moment. Uh, the Scots horse are unfortunately busy pursuing. They are on high ground, and I don't think, uh, honestly, because they're heavy foot, heavy weapon, and bow, the Scots horse may actually be quite effective charging these guys. Okay, logic would suggest to charge this unit first because it's weakest, and we might just break through it, and they should break soon. And we will then charge into the. Yeah. I don't think that the English longbows along for this world, that this matching them to the Scots horse was the correct decision. 
and now pretty much the entire English line is disrupted and I suspect we'll have victory next turn as the English army just explodes. We might lose this on our pike block and that might extend the battle a little bit longer but yeah this isn't going to last long next turn. Yeah there really is no way to stop those pike blocks with um, I'm reflecting what's going on in the comments right now because we're talking about how to avoid this situation. But it really is impossible to stop these pike blocks just for shooting. You're not going to disrupt enough units. Um, I think you have to use the, Scot the English cavalry to win this fight. Uh, that and the, if you can get enough firepower from the longbows, because they actually can put forward enough firepower to disrupt the pike blocks, but they can't do it alone. taking the guns as well. Uh, we are losing here. We're going to lose both of those pike blocks if this doesn't end soon. Lots of fragmentations but I'm not getting any routes. That unit's... the militia bellmen and longbowmen have held out heroically given the odds they're facing. Desperate times when the long women are getting involved in that kind of fight. Ah, uh, but that's the end of it. I think one of our pike blocks crumbled. No, both of them did. Well, that was to be expected. And the light horse, as predicted, had a bad day. And there we go, the, practically the entire English line is just shattered. And uh, if the battle had gone on, we would have surrounded with Lanschneck Kyle eventually. Either that or got a 3 on 1 advantage, which is what the Scots Pike needs to reliably beat the Lanschneck Kyle. Alright folks, well, as I said, you need to bring the English cavalry and you need to use the longbows, I think, to win on the open there. You bring your men at arms as well because they give a little bit of strength and I think you will be forced to bring at least one bellman unit, but keep them to a minimum because they really are lousy troops. Um, thank you to Awesome for my opponent and uh, I will see, and uh, well, please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed the content and I will see you next time. Farewell. Casualty screen because I always forget it.